Thanks, Vince. Uh, yeah, this screenshot shows a little bit about me. Um, Vince and I did do a presentation at VMworld this year together, and that, that went really good about salt stack config and Microsoft Windows. I've done some Power Block and some VMUG presentations. If you want to know what I'm working on, um, always go out and check out my blog, www.vcrocs.info. And anytime I do updates to the blog, I usually put it out on Twitter. So if you want to go out and Twitter, go out to Twitter and, and follow me, that'll keep you up to date with what I'm working on. So I didn't start using SaltStack until August of this year. I wanted to <clears throat> take a look at it since it became part of the vRealize suite. I wanted to use it as an enhancement with everything we were doing with vRealize automation. We're doing all our server builds and a lot of day two operations with VRA and I wanted to see how we could make things better using SaltStack config. So here's a quick outline of my journey and that's what this presentation's about. You know, I first started looking at, you know, how do you add minions to the salt stack mat, you know, the, to the master. <clears throat> and then after that, I just wanted to learn all about all the built-in functions, you know. A test ping, you know, is a really good one to understand how things work. <clears throat> and then with installing the minions, you know, I was started out doing it manually, then I wanted to automate it. And then after I started understanding how the functions worked, it's like, well, how do you run these functions against all your minions, which are your servers? And that's where I spent a lot of time targeting, and I have a couple demos to show you how we're targeting. And then looking at the beacons and the reactors, you know, if you have a Windows service that you always want to have it be stopped, how you can react to that if somebody starts it up that, that shouldn't. And then that's then after I started understanding that is where I then started adding it to our VRA server builds. And everything I'm doing with SaltStack config as a Windows admin, um, I'm doing it with PowerShell. You don't see very many demos on how to do that. So I have some <clears throat> examples at the end of a like a PowerShell module that I started working on. And, then, and all the functions that I'm creating to to make changes with salt. So hope you enjoy what we're going to show today. As a Windows admin, I help you get started. So we're going to start out by installing minions. Um, the first way I'm going to show with Windows is how I started. Is you know I just wanted to understand how it works, so I. I went and copied the install file down to the server and I manually did the install on one or one or two and then after that I'm like yeah I need to automate this <clears throat> so the reason I want to show how you would manually install the minion is so that when you do the automation side you know which questions to ask so like right here you can see when you're starting to you need you need to put in you know the IP of the master or the name and then what you want the minion to be called now through code I'm doing that exact same process which is why I showed how to do it manually so <clears throat> since I live in a zero trust environment I am using VMware um, tools to talk to my server and using PowerShell so copy VM guest file goes through VMware tools and when I do invoke VM script, um, it's using tools. So if you notice, I did a slash S to be silent. I've specified the master and the minion name, and that's based on the variable that I have set. So if we go ahead and run that, if you watch the bottom of the screen, you can see that it's copying the install file down to the minion. And as soon as that copy is done, it's going to then kick off the install and the install is complete. If we go out and do a refresh. Now I installed an older version on purpose because I also want to show how, to, how easy it is to upgrade minions. 
So the install file I installed was 2019. Now to upgrade the minion, and this this I'm going to show how to upgrade the minion, but this could be any piece of software that you have. So I have a couple jobs set up to do that. So you can see it's 2019 now, and I want to go up to 3003. So it's, yeah, 2019. So a couple jobs I have. The first thing I do there again because I have is NSXT Zero Trust is I copy the file from the salt master to the minion. So if you see it says cp.get file which is the function to copy. You give it the source which is my salt server and that's where I'm going to copy it to the minion. The next job is going to do the upgrade. <clears throat> so just like in my first script I showed, if you specify the .exe file and do a slash s, which is silent, it'll kick off that install and, and complete silently. And then when I'm done, I want to go out and delete the file. So I have a, a f I'm using the function file dot remove to to clean up because I'm only showing doing this to one minion. <clears throat> You know, you could do this to, you know, ten hundred thousand at the same time if you really want to, and that's where the true power of Salt Stack comes in, is the way that you can run these jobs against so many servers at the same time. So let's go out and look at the job. To the right, where you see GID, it's Job ID, the JID. If we go out and do a refresh, you can see the job completed. So it copied the file down to the minion. If we go out and do a refresh, there's the file. So now to do the install, we're just going to run it against the same minion. Go pick the job. If you go and look at the in progress under activity, it's a good way to see <clears throat> when the job is done. So if you go under job info, there you can see that it's done and it's at the same version. So it's very quick and easy to uh, upgrade your minions. Some people have asked why do I why do I do it this way? And, and like I said earlier, it's because of, you know, our servers can't just reach out to other ones in the zero trust. We try to keep, you know, the ports, lim limit the ports, limit the, the servers that they can actually get to. So I've been trying to do my, my jobs and functions in a way that I don't have to ask to open up extra ports. So now we're going to just go out and clean up that file. Just do a quick delete. Go out and look to see how the progress is. You can see it's done. So if we go out and look at the server, the file should be gone. And it is. So the next thing I wanted to do was auto accept my minions. And in order to do that, you set up a reactor. And then what the reactor does is it looks for an event to show up in the event buzz under salt slash auth as the event. And then it runs my state file called accept key. So if we go and look at the accept key, I didn't want to just accept any servers. So I did set some criteria. You know, if the status is pending or the state of it is pending and it starts with a certain strings, I will auto accept that into my environment because normally it goes into the pending mode first and then you have to manually accept those and by doing the auto accept it it makes it <clears throat> for like when I'm doing my VRA builds that will automatically get accepted and then I can start 
running jobs against these new servers through some of the function or some of the jobs that I have set up. Next thing we're going to talk about is how to react very quickly to zero day threats. Uh, when I first started looking at SaltStack was in August and I don't know if anybody remembers as a Windows admin that there was a zero day threat with the principaler. And one of their recommendations was just to go out and just stop that service on all your Windows servers. <clears throat> so when I started looking at the salt stack, I'm like, all right, how can I create some jobs to do that? So I did set up a couple jobs we're going to show you. And what I want to show is how you can do it using PowerShell or the built-in functions. Because you could do it either way. If you have a lot of... Um, as a Windows admin, PowerShell knowledge, here you can see to disable it, there's a one-liner, you know, you can use the function command.run, set your PowerShell command, and then say shell equals PowerShell as an argument, and you can stop services, or that's actually to disable services. <clears throat> I've been trying to use the build-in functions as much as possible, so if you do service.disable, send it the argument which is the service name which is spooler does the exact same thing so it's the same thing for starting service.start send it to spooler the service name which is spooler and you can start services and this is now if you want to do them both at the same time that's where you can start getting into writing scripts so you do command.script show it the path give it the path to your script shells powershell and that is stored in the file server on the on the master so if you look at the, the path then it says that it was fuller so it's the same two commands that i showed but i just stuck them in put them into a script that way that you can do both steps at the same time you can stop it and disable so then using powershell to stop the service or the function command dot run give it this the command and then the functions like I say I've been trying to use the functions as much as I can and when I learn how they work it's like service dot stop pass it the argument and the job will run so let's let's run those jobs show you how it works you can see right now it's currently running and it's set to automatically start so if we want to use the built-in function let's go stop that service go pick that server name go look at the progress go pick on the job ID And you can see it stopped. It's still set to automatic, so if it restarted, if the server restarted, the job would start back up, so let's go and disable that. And I'm showing though the steps, you know, to do one step at a time, and that it's a good way to learn how the system works. You know, you can start combining these jobs, and we will get into that. So let's make it that it's started again. So now if we're going to go run it, let's do them both at the same time with the script that I showed. So now if we go and run it, the script will stop it and disable it all in, in one job. So now if we go and do a refresh on the services. It's disabled and stopped. Now the same way I'm showing to stop and disable if you wanted to start services. And it could be any any service that's on the system. You know, I'm showing for the spooler, but it could be, you know, SQL, IIS, could be any anything that you have out there. Do a refresh, there it's running. 
And what's nice about this is, you know, you can use this as remote management to get in and make changes. So now that we had some jobs to, to manually go on stop services, how do you make sure they stay stopped? And that's where beacons and reactors come in. So on your minion, you can have a beacon file that will monitor the spooler service. <clears throat> and if the spooler service status would change, so to get that file down to, we're gonna, like I did some of the other stuff, we're gonna do a, use the function, copy the file, there's the beacon file and there's where it goes on to the minion. And then after, if we'd ever want to delete the beacon file, I also have a job set up to do that. And then anytime you make changes to a beacon file on a minion, you have to restart the service and the service is salt minion. So I have a job to do that. So to show you how this works, let's just copy the file down to the minion. show you what it looks like so you can see it's beacons it's doing the service and then these are the services that I'm monitoring so spooler says on change only so <clears throat> it'll never send an event back unless it's this it's changed like if it's start if it's stopped and it started that's a change or if it's you know it's something that you want to make sure stays running if it's if it's currently running and stopped it would only send an event on that change so we copy the file down and it does need to go in a very specific folder. So if you go and look, there's that same file that was on the server, the salt server. So now let's go restart the service. So on restart, it'll pick up that beacon and then it'll start monitoring the spooler service. So right now you can see I want it to be stopped. So let's say somebody logged in that didn't know it needs to stay stopped and they're like, hey, I wanna, I wanna start this up. So they set it to automatic and they right mouse click and they start it up because they think that it should be running. But security says otherwise. So if you notice, without doing anything, the beacon seen that change. The reactor ran that state, ran a state file that says I'm going to go stop that service. And no matter how many times they try, it's it's they're not going to be able to start it. So if we go and look at the reactor, it's looking for the. Uh, service spooler and then there's the state file that I'm going to run so that's the event it was looking for you know salt beacon service spooler and if we go and look at the spooler auto stop state file it says stop service you know if, if spooler is running if it's true I'm going to go and stop the service and there's the argument is spooler now you could do the opposite too. I have it all commented out just to show you that if it's, it's set to be stopped, you could go and start it up right away. So as a Windows Server admin, now let's look at some Windows Registry Management. Because at some point you're always going to have to make changes to the registry, whether it's for security reasons or application, um, all kinds of things that you may have to do. So I set up some jobs, one to create a registry entry and one to update. And I'm using it, showing it using PowerShell. So just like all my other jobs, you know, it's command.script. I have some scripts out there. And then you always need to say shell is PowerShell as part of the arguments. So let's go out and look at those scripts. I do have them under the file server. So if we go and look at to create it, I'm going to create a registry key that says VRA build equals true. And then to show you how you can update it, I'm going to change that value to no. I mean, that's some very, very common changes that you 
that you may do, you know, changing ones to zeros or changing values. So if we go out and look at the registry, um, it's currently not there. So now let's run that job. We're going to create that registry key. And within the salts.config, when you run the jobs to, to update the status, you do have to refresh. And you can see that it completed. If we go out and do a refresh on the registry, you can see that key now showed up. VRA build is equal to yes. Very simple. Some quick and easy jobs that you can create. Now let's go out and change that yes to a no. Edit, update, <clears throat> go out and look at the in progress, let's go up and do a refresh, Job ran, completed successfully, it's returned. Go out and do a refresh on the registry key. And now you can see that the value is no. And like I keep saying, you could run that against, you know, 100 servers at the same time or all, all your servers in your environment. That's where the true power of um, salt comes in. So now we were running everything manually. Let's show how to schedule jobs to run. Say somebody comes to you and they, they say, hey, I want to reboot all my test servers to, you know, on a certain night at a certain time. So you can create schedules. So let's do a reboot. And I have a job set up to reboot all my Windows servers. Now your target, I'm going to do my test servers. I'm going to run it one time. And you, it could be reoccurring, could be whatever you choose. So let's set this to reboot on the night of the SALT conference. November 4th is when my presentation is, and we'll reboot it at about 11 o'clock. Set that. So on Thursday, November 4th at 11 o'clock, all my test Windows servers are going to reboot. The next item we're going to look at is adding grain information so that you can target um, your minions very easily. So if you look at all my minions that I have in my environment, we go and edit that you can see where it says grain ID and then I was very specific of which one I wanted to, to see <clears throat> but you can also say grain you can see there I'm using two different criteria FQDN and then also OS full name I've spent a lot of time um, doing the targets so here I created a CSV file from vCenter because I want to add the vCenter tags as grain information. So you can see each VM was listed there and all the tags that are associated with it in vCenter. So I have a state file that is doing orchestration to add that information to the minions and you can see the first step is going to copy the file down using the function cpget and then I'm going to run the script that will actually pull the information out of that CSV file. And then I sync the grain information and at the very end I'll remove the file because it's no longer needed on the minion. So 
let's go and look you can see that the grains file is not not on the VM yet so if we go and run that job which is going to do the orchestration When you do orchestration jobs, each step within that orchestration does show up as, as a separate job. So you can see CP get file was listed, the command script, the syncing the grains. I, I really like that part about the orchestration that you can see how each step completed. And then the last step showed up now as, as deleting the file. So you can see the grains file is there and it lists vCenter tags and then all the tags that are associated with that minion. And I did clean up that CSV file when it was done running. So if we go and look at that, you can see now the grain vCenter tag shows up. And then all the, in this example, all the tags are on the same line. So let's go create a target based on one of the tag names. So if you create target, it's going to be vCenter tags and if you specify the tag if you put an asterisk before and after it's like a wild card that way it can be anywhere within that string of of tags so then when we go and look it'll filter it'll create your targets <clears throat> based on the vcenter tag that you specify we use vCenter tags a lot, and to have that as grain information makes it very nice way to target it. I'm going to do the same thing, but this time, instead of using PowerShell to pull the information out of a CSV file, I'm going to use the built-in functions of salt. So if you notice, I took, I took the old grain information away. And here I have a script that goes through, it's using PowerShell, and I'm specifying the VM, I'm going to go get the VM name, I'm going to get all the tags that are associated with it, but I'm going to use the salt function grains.append on, on this example. I really like how it formats the grains file when you use the built-in function. So after you run that, you can see each, each vCenter tag is then on its own line within the grains file. And then when you go and look at the grains information, you can see each tag is, is then separated. And I kind of like doing that better. I wanted to show the first one as a way to show how you can do the orchestration. And that there's always, you know, there's always two ways to do everything. So in this example, to create the target, now when I pick the key to be vCenter tag, you can see now that each tag, vCenter tag, shows up in the drop down as being a separate choice. I kind of like the way that that works a little bit better. But both, both ways that I showed are, are fine, and it's whatever works best in your environment.
here you can see in the job when it ran the return value you can see that it showed the vCenter tags it's a good way to check to make sure that everything's working correct to go look at your jobs You can see that I'm doing the sync then afterwards. And the other thing as a Windows admin is you might want to do is show Active Directory OUs as great information. So here's a PowerShell script that I have that it goes out and it connects to the um, salt stack config server. And that's what the first couple lines here are doing. It's creating an SSH session. To the server I save all the passwords in hashi vault and I actually have a little function that will go out and grab the password And then to get a list of all the minions that are currently in salt stack config, I do a salt run manage up and that returns a list of every, every minion that you have. And then after I get the list of minions, <clears throat> I created this script as like a way, like maybe one time a week you would run this. So the first thing I'm doing there is I'm deleting the old key, Active Directory key information. So grains.delete key removes it from the grains file. And then I'll go and do a sync. <clears throat> and then now this is the, where I'm reaching out into Active Directory. I'm pulling in the OUs that that minion is part of. And then I'm doing grains.append. And there's the key information and then the value of the OU. And then after I add all the OUs <clears throat> as grain information, then I do another grain sync. So that way it goes and when I, when I go and look at the information, it shows it right away. So you can see the key ADOU shows up and then there's all the different options so if I wanted to show all my prod every minion that's in the prod OU you can then create a target based on that which I find to be very very helpful and the next thing to for great information is we also have NSXT so NSXT has tags so if somebody would come to us and say hey I want to run you know this process based on the NSXT tags so I'm doing the same thing you know I'm connecting to the NSXT manager through the API getting my password out of the hashi vault making the connection to the salt stack config server to run my SSH commands and you can see there I'm specifying only one VM but it could be you know if you'd say it's an asterisk it would actually pull back for everything and then for each VM I, I loop through and get the tag information And you can see the same command, grains.append. I'm using the key NSX security tags. If there isn't any, I want to put the word none. And then if there are ta NSX tags associated with that minion, I do then put the current NSX tag. I append that. And then I do a grain sync and then disconnect. So if we go and look at the jobs that completed, you can see there I appended the job. And the key, and then the value. So now if 
if we go up to the minion, if we create a target, you'll see the NSXT tag is a key, and then those are all the tags that are an option to use. So then when you click on that target that you just created, you'll only see the minions based on NSXT tags. see the tags are listed. Active Directory tags. It's just a really nice way to be able to create all your targets. Because you can write the best state file, you know, all these really cool jobs, but if you don't have a way to go and target all your minions, um, what, what good are they? The last thing I'm going to show, you know, I was calling a lot of functions, so I actually, I'm creating, I'm actually working on creating like a salt stack config PowerShell module. Right now, it's just a PS1 file, which is a regular PowerShell file that I that I call, and it brings all the functions into my scripts. But you can see, I'm creating functions. You know, here's one to disconnect. The previous one was to connect. And I'm trying to use the same naming conventions like the, like you would see in Power CLI, you know. <clears throat> so like, and then also make it the same as what the function is and the name is in salt. Because the salt command is cp.get file, and you can see that I invoked, and I try to use the same name. And if you put, when you create these functions, it just makes it nice so that when I'm writing scripts that I it makes less code in my scripts my automation scripts and then I just call these functions and I just design the functions in a way that you know I can just keep keep reusing them you know to get the service status and I do use the output to JSON a lot because with with PowerShell it makes it very easy to then to go through the results that you get back from salt and then just pull out the information that you want. So like that one there, you can see if it's if the result is true, I actually want to see the word running or the word stopped if it's not true, instead of just true or false. You know, if I want to stop a service, service dot stop, send it to service name. And I'll put it as JSON. If I want to disable the service, same thing. Then I'll, I'll the only I just need to pass it the minion name and then the service name. And there's an example of how you would put that into your PowerShell code. to get the OS version. In this example, you know, my function is reaching into the um, registry. I've always found that the most accurate way to get which version of the OS is to look at that location in the registry. And then I go through the results, pull out which line I know is the OS version, and that's what I return. Here's the one for grains.append that I kept showing, you know. Hopefully this gives people watching this that are, that are interested as in PowerShell as Windows Server Admins to see how, how easy it could be to, to work with SaltStack config use existing PowerShell scripts that you already have in your environment and just go write some some functions that you're gonna use a lot and start making your own module. So thank you for attending this session. Hope you found it helpful as a, as a Windows admin. 
um, like I said throughout this demonstration or my present presentation is you know the true power for me with salt stack config is the way that I can run these jobs against many servers at the same time and it just makes things a lot faster um, and learning the learning curve it, I've never used a config manager before um, so I just started in July so like I said within Within, you know, a month's time, just working on it part-time, I became very comfortable with it. And hopefully, hopefully you'll find this useful to help you get started. And um, if you want to see what I'm working on, just reach out to my blog every now and then. I do write some um, updates and then follow me on Twitter. Sometimes I'll put when I'm writing the updates on Twitter. So thank, thank you for attending.